Thanks for clicking on the video. Hit the subscribe button for more weekly content and hit the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. We back! I'm on the hard stop Lucas schedule with how long it takes to get a video out. But the work for this year is focus. So let's focus on getting some good content out for you all. What's good peeps with Poppin? How are you doing? And welcome to part one of a brand new what a video for you guys. I was a little hesitant to start the series immediately because the last one that was completed involved Kari being the Digimon Emperor. But who am I to deny the people what they want? I posted a poll in my community tab and this is what most of you guys wanted to see. But don't worry, that other series is also going to be done so just be patient for that one. TK is my absolute favorite and it's fun exploring his relationship with darkness since the anime really only scratches the surface with it. But before we get into the start of the adventure, I have two quick things to say. First, I've been exploring a few different video ideas on my other channel particularly AI based let's plays so if that tickles your fancy go check that out secondly if you'd like to support the channel even more hit up that buy me a coffee link in the description any and all contributions will go to make the channel bigger and better which of course means more what is for you homies oh and one more thing almost 92 percent of you beautiful viewers aren't subscribed so what are you waiting for hitting that button is absolutely free so do it right now before we even get started on this journey really trying to hit 3k this year anyway enough with the selfless plug it's evil TK time if this video receives 30 likes, that will let me know you also want things to continue into part 2. Let's begin. Just like how we started with Kari's story, let's set the stage for TK's descent into darkness. And let's just say, it's a bit more complicated than you expect. Unlike Kari, whose relationship with darkness involves it being the antithesis of light, the Digidestin of Hope has an utter disdain for it, and for those that abuse it without being quite aware of the growing darkness within himself. Ironically, it's that hatred of darkness that fuels his own, which makes him the perfect breeding ground for a dark spore. Similarly to our previous story, the dark spore would embed itself into him a few years before the events of season 2. So how did it affect TK? For those who don't know, a dark spore enhances one's mental and physical abilities exponentially at the cost of a person's humanity. In TK's case, dark images and thoughts plagued his mind non-stop. His parents' divorce, his family splitting up, Angemon's death. At first, there were just nightmares that he couldn't shake. Eventually, those thoughts weighed on his mind constantly throughout the day. The more time went on, the worse it got. TK barely slept. He was irritable all the time, and his eyes lost any semblance of hope they once had. Instead, they grew dull with despair. He couldn't fight the darkness inside him anymore and realized that it was a part of him. He couldn't lie to himself anymore. The one thing he hated the most was the one thing driving him forward. No more, TK said to himself. No more running. On cue, the computer in his room notified him of a new message, telling him to return to the digital world in order to fulfill his destiny. With nothing else to lose, TK accepted and was soon transported to the Dark Ocean, where, you guessed it, his classic Digivice morphed into the Dark D3. It was here that TK permanently cast aside his past role as a Digidestin and began sowing the seeds of his future plans for the digital world. Patamon was also there too, sensing some malevolence in his partner's heart. TK, what happened to you? Fast forward to the start of season two. Originally, things started off by following TK to school, meeting Yoli and Cody along the way. Not this time, TK had nowhere to be seen. Thus, Yoli and Cody would not have met him and proceed to school as per their normal routine. At school, Kari and Davis meet each other. Davis ecstatic that they're in the same class again. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. That is, until the homeroom teacher mentions that they were supposed to get a new student, but they never showed. Supposedly a prodigy named Takaru Takashi. Huh? TK? Kari said that a little louder than she would like once she realized who the teacher was referring to. Davis heard her and asked, TK, what's that? He's a friend. She responded while looking at the empty seat next to her. Through Ty and Matt, she heard that TK hasn't been the same since leaving the digital world three years ago. She hasn't seen him since, but hearing that he was supposed to show up, but didn't, has got her worried. Soon enough, things take into action as Kari and Izzy get an alert on their digivices. Izzy informs Kari and Davis, who decided to tag along, that Ty went to the digital world to help Agamon ward off a rampaging Monochromon. Something weird is happening with Monochromon, but I'll explain that in a bit. Trust me, it's not what you think. Somehow, Agamon can't digivolve, and Ty needs backup. Like before, Ty finds the Digiac of Courage, unlocks the D3s present inside them, and Kari and Davis proceed to the digital world. Once they meet up with Tai, Agamon, and Gatamon, he explains to them that this Monochromon is acting crazy. They get to a decent hiding spot and he shows the two what he means, and they couldn't believe what was happening. The armored Digimon was actively hunting and taking out a group of Demi Devimon. Some were too injured to escape, 
while others cowered in fear. And there were a lot more dim Devimon here when Agumon arrived, but Monochromon destroyed them without a thought. Tai said through gritted teeth. How can that thing do that? Wait until I- Davis, wait! Tai stuck out his arm. Take a look at that. He pointed to the side of Monochromon, showing a peculiar device sticking out of his body. That can't be. Kari gasped. But it is. A black gear. Meaning, someone or something is making Monochromon attack those Dem Devimon. As if on cue, Monochromon let out a feral, anguished roar before charging back against the helpless Digimon. I don't care what happens! I can't stand this anymore! Davis yelled as he popped out of the foliage and ran up to the Rhino Digimon. Davis! What are you- Ty's cries fall on deaf ears. Hey, Monomon or whatever your name is! Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Monochromon caught wind of Davis' presence and proceeded to shift his focus. Too bad for Davis. His reckless bravado quickly morphed into fear. Monochromon inched closer, mouth open and a molten fireball forming. Davis! This way! Ty screamed as loud as he could, and Davis instinctively reacted and followed the older Digi Destin before getting completely incinerated. Now with the brainwashed Digimon on their tails, Ty led them to a nearby cave he found before Kari and Davis arrived. Once inside, Ty was furious at the thought of something blocking Agumon's ability to Digivolve. If they had Greymon, the Demi Devimon didn't have to die so mercilessly. Kari did her best to console her brother, but she was just as angry as he was, if not more. Only a heartless monster could do this to Monochromon and the Demi Devimon. Being that this was the cave that housed the Digiac of Courage, from this point forward the events continue as they originally did. Davis meets Themon, he armored Digivolves to Flamedramon, and defeats the hypnotized Monochromon. But instead of destroying a black ring, it was a black gear. After making sure Monochromon was okay, the group headed over to check on the surviving Demi Devimon. Do you guys know anything about what happened with Monochromon? The little devil Digimon weren't trusting of these humans, but the one in front, clearly the leader, began to speak after a brief pause. He explained that while they were out buying, they crossed the path of Monochromon going toe to toe with the Devimon. I didn't want to believe it, but this confirms it. Devimon's back. But Ty, wasn't Devimon destroyed by Angemon years ago? What'll happen if TK finds out about this? He suffered the most out of us thanks to that final fight with Devimon. For now, let's just focus on getting as much information as we can. Hey, Demi Devimon, is there anything else you remember from that encounter earlier? They continued the story by saying that, of course, they initially rooted for Devimon, since they're all Devil Digimon, but things took a turn for the worse once the fallen angel Digimon embedded his black gear into Monochromon. It didn't take long before the rookie devils were now being the hunted prey, but in the midst of their escape, the leader caught a slight glimpse of what looked to be a human. They didn't get any details or anything, but it was definitely not a Digimon. Another human here? Really? Are they a Digi Destin? And what's their connection with Devimon? Ty was unloading question after question, but they were more or less for himself. Right now, the Digi Destin needed to return home and discuss a few things. Agumon and Gajamon volunteered to watch over the Demi Devimon until they can recover. And who knows? They might be able to get more information later. Somewhere deep in the digital world, in an unknown cavern. A figure views countless monitors recapping the events that just took place. Heartless monster, huh? We haven't even scratched the surface of my master plan. The digital world will be a world of pure life. Just you wait and see. Back in the human world, some things continued as before with Yoli and Cody revealing that they received the other two D3s, and Ty gathered up the other veteran Digi Destin to come up with a plan to tackle the return of Devimon. The other couldn't believe that Devimon came back, but Izzy reminded them that Digimon are data, and there's a chance for said data that was thought to be destroyed to be reconfigured. To make matters worse, none of their partners can digivolve naturally to take on Devimon, despite how much stronger they are now, meaning it's up to the new Digidestin and Armored Digivolution to handle it. Ty also brought up that a human was spotted near Devimon, but none of the older kids even had access to the digital world. Just who is this new kid, and what do they want? Kari looked around the park and saw that once again, TK was not present. Without a second thought, she just up and asked the group if anybody knew what was going on with him. He didn't show up to school, nor did he help out when we were against Monochromon. I never knew him to be like that. The silence in the park was deafening, as if the wildlife also needed answers. Soon enough, it was Matt who broke the silence. You're right. That was never the type of person he was. But over time, that all changed. I don't know what happened, but it's like... He's abandoned all hope in this world. The older he's gotten, the more cynical he's become. In his eyes, nothing has meaning anymore. If his own brother said that, just how far has the Digi Destin of Hope fallen? The one who represented the best in all of them. What happened in just those three years? Kari spoke out once more, 
Well, it sounds like to me TK needs our help. If we're going to save the digital world from Devimon, we need him. He never gave up on us, so I'm for sure not giving up on him. Well said, Ty said standing up. He's one of us, so giving up is not an option. Matt, thanks for filling us in on the whole situation. I know it wasn't easy, but now you won't have to handle it alone. If the digital world is going to be saved, we need all hands on deck. The newer Digidestin will be taking the lead on this fight, but we'll support them in any way we can. Everyone looked towards their leader with fierce determination in their eyes, ready to tackle whatever challenge is thrown their way. But little did they know how big of a challenge it would be. That's where this part will end for today. How's that? I wanted to use this first part to essentially paint the picture for TK's descent into darkness, while also laying the groundwork for how it will be different from Kwari's story. Sure, the roles are reverse, but there are different characters with different motivations and behaviors, but there will also be similarities as well. I also didn't want to establish TK as the Digimon Emperor or incorporate the control spires just yet, as I think it will be an interesting change to have him build up to that. What do you think about how the Dark Spore affected TK? Do you like the reuse of Devimon in his black gears? What do you think TK's plan as the Digimon Emperor will be? Let me know your theories in the comments below and leave suggestions for more Digimon what ifs you'd like to see come to life in the future. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!